Optimizing Cardiac Output After Surgery by Dorothy Becca. Hello, my name is Dorothy Becca. I'm a clinical nurse specialist in the Cardiac Intensive Care Unit at the Children's Hospital Boston. In this video on postoperative considerations after pediatric cardiac surgery, I will discuss issues related to optimizing cardiac output in the postoperative pediatric cardiac patient. Maintaining cardiac output. Preserve myocardial function and minimize oxygen consumption by decreasing stress to the heart. Too much ionotropic support, such as with dopamine or epinephrine, causes the heart to work harder, produces cardiac arrhythmias, and incre increases both systemic and pulmonary vascular resistance. Low intercardiac or central venous pressures will cause tachycardia and decrease peripheral perfusion. Fluid boluses of 5 to 10 milliliters per kilogram may be indicated to ensure adequate cardiac preload. Monitor for increased systemic and pulmonary vascular resistance. Increased pulmonary vascular resistance may be due to excessive pulmonary blood flow. Inflammatory and ischemic responses related to cardiopulmonary bypass, edema, or prolonged mechanical ventilation. Increased systemic vascular resistance may be related to left ventricular failure, cardiopulmonary bypass, hypoxia, acidosis, or low body temperature, or pain. Measures to decrease pulmonary and systemic vascular resistance include adequate mechanical ventilation and oxygenation, analgesia and sedation, as well as afterload reducing agents such as nitroprusside. Milrinone has both inotropic and afterload reducing effects. Maintain cardiac output for improving cardiac contractility with inotropic medications such as dopamine and by maintaining normal acid-base balance and adequate tissue oxygenation. Normal sinus rhythm will optimize cardiac output. Point of clarification. Decreasing oxygen consumption is important to help balance cardiac output and demand. Milrinone. The PrimaCore trial was one of the few multi-centered, randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled trial of a pediatric cardiovascular drug. Milrinone is a non-catecholamine inotropic agent with vasodilatory and lucitropic or cardiac relaxation effects. It has been shown to improve cardiac output while lowering filling pressures and systemic and pulmonary vascular resistance with minimal cardiac oxygen consumption. In the PrimaCore trial, patients were ram randomized to high-dose milrinone of 0.75 micrograms per kilogram per minute. One-third were randomized to low-dose milrinone of 0.25 micrograms per kilograms per minute and one-third were randomized to placebo. The prophylactic use of milrinone resulted in a 64% relative risk reduction in developing low cardiac output syndrome in the first 36 hours after cardiopulmonary bypass with high-dose milrinone of 0.75 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Low Cardiac Output Syndrome in this study by Ranoski and colleagues, they compared two cardiopulmonary bypass strategies of infants with transposition of the great arteries following an arterial switch operation. This study found that there was a median maximal decrease in cardiac index by 33%, which occurred 6 to 12 hours after cardiopulmonary bypass. 25% of the patients developed a cardiac index of less than 2 liters per minute per meter squared in their first night following surgery. When cardiac index is less than 2 liters per minute per meter squared, mortality and morbidity may be higher. Low cardiac output is a common and can be predicted after complex pediatric heart surgery. Patients may be most critical during the, this identified time frame, 
and care should be taken to avoid stressful interventions which may cause the patient to deteriorate. Also, the study demonstrated that as cardiac output decreased, both pulmonary and systemic vascular resistance increased. Postoperative management strategies should focus on anticipating and managing low cardiac output before it occurs. Cardiac arrhythmias. Over 25% of pediatric patients have cardiac arrhythmias after cardiac surgery. Risk factors for developing arrhythmias are volume overload, ventricular hypertrophy, myocardial ischemia, ventriculotomy incision, multiple suture lines, and serum electrolyte disturbances. Treat cardiac arrhythmias in order to optimize cardiac output, especially in an unstable patient. An electrocardiogram and atrial wire tracing will help to diagnose the rhythm. Treatments of arrhythmias include antiarrhythmic medications, maintaining normal electrolyte levels, especially potassium, magnesium, and calcium. Induced hypothermia will slow cardiac conduction and decrease the heart rate. If the patient has pacing wires, use external cardiac pacing to improve cardiac conduction. Pacing wires. In the operating, two atrial wires may be placed on the right atrium and two ventricular wires may be placed on the right ventricle. These wires are used to externally pace the atrium and ventricle when an abnormal rhythm occurs and leads to a decrease in cardiac output. Pulmonary hypertension. Normal pulmonary artery pressure is usually 15 millimeters mercury and should be less than one half the systemic blood pressure. Common causes of postoperative elevated pulmonary artery pressure include anatomical obstruction to pulmonary blood flow, such as pulmonary valve stenosis or branch pulmonary stenosis, residual intercardiac left to right shunts, or a large preoperative left to right shunt, such as with a large ventricular septal defect. A pulmonary hypertension crisis presents with a low oxygen saturation. Immediate intervention is indicated. Common causes of pulmonary hypertensive crisis are hypoxemia and hypoventilation, acidosis and hypercarbia, and these can be produced by suctioning the endotracheal tube. Extra care should be taken when suctioning a high-risk patient. Consider sedating and instilling lidocaine into the endotracheal tube prior to suctioning to decrease bronchospasm. Other causes of pulmonary hypertensive crisis are hypothermia, alpha adrenergic inotropes such as epinephrine, and environmental stressors including pain. Optimal ventilation is necessary to avoid and treat pulmonary hypertension. If a pulmonary hypertensive crisis occurs, prompt action must be taken so the patient does not have a cardiac arrest. The patient should be hyperventilated with 100% oxygen while sedation and analgesia medica medications are administered. Consider paralysis. The patient should be maintained alkalotic and the administration of sodium bicarbonate should be considered. Afterload reducing agents are helpful, however, inhaled nitric oxide, if available, is a treatment of choice. Nitric oxide is a selective pulmonary vasodilator which directly affects the lung vasculature and has no systemic vascular effects. Summary. So, in summary of all the nursing considerations for postoperative management for pediatric cardiac surgical patients, it's important to remember that interdisciplinary sign out is crucial to managing postoperative cardiac patients. Thorough nursing assessment is required to monitor trends and changes. Many postoperative complications can be predicted and the appropriate management strategies can be implemented before a patient deteriorates. Skill communication within the team is, is critical for prompt intervention and optimal patient management. 
Patient outcomes are dependent on good clinical and communication skills of the bedside nurse. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.